Welcome to the Myrtle Beach Art Museum's Library After School Program. This workshop is called Expressive Mind Maps and is inspired by the Bishop Collection of Antique Maps and Historical Prints on exhibit through April 3rd. Welcome to a virtual tour of the Art Museum's Bishop Collection of Antique Maps and Prints. I'm the curator of exhibitions, Liz Miller. The collection is comprised of 30 works dated from 1606 to 1863. It was donated to the Art Museum by Mrs. Dorothy Jones Bishop in 1999 after the passing of her husband, George Bishop. Okay, let's get started on our tour. Following the discovery of the New World in the 15th century, European countries sought to document and map new territories using cartographic methods and technologies developed as early as the 13th century. The invention of the magnetic compass, telescope, and sextant enabled increasing accuracy. You may be wondering what cartography is. It's just a fancy word for map making. Many early European cartographers were recruited from the ranks of painters, miniaturists, and other artists. What's a miniaturist, you wonder? It just means an artist who works in a really small scale. Over the centuries, cities including Amsterdam, Florence, London, Paris, and Venice competed as map-making centers of the world. A succession of explorers, artists, and mathematicians gathered in these hubs to create new maps introducing the expanding world. Wondering what mathematicians have to do with cartography? They have to calculate scale so that everything on the map looks proportionate. <laughs> Typically, they copied earlier maps, some of which had been passed down for centuries, and drew their own based on explorers' observations and new surveying techniques. The golden era of decorated and colored map production took place during the late 17th and 18th centuries, with each expedition to the Americas resulting in a better understanding of the coastal and inland topography of the continents. The early cartographers relied heavily on Native American descriptions, unsubstantiated reports, and hearsay for the development of their maps. So maybe somebody said, that mountain was huge! But in reality, it wasn't all that big. As a result of all of these things, topographic features of this period were often exaggerated or misrepresented. The first map we're going to look at in the collection is the earliest dated map. It dates to around 1606, and it was created by cartographer Gerard Mercator and engraved by Iodicus Hondius. The Mercator Hondius map became the most important regional map of its time, being closely followed cartographically for nearly 70 years after its initial printing. It also played a large role in helping a group of Englishmen establish what is arguably the most important colonization in North American history, Jamestown, Virginia. Geographical and topographical misconceptions abound throughout the map. For instance, the waterfall depicted in the Apalachti or Appalachian Mountains is thought to be Niagara Falls by today's historians. The large lake shown just below that is based partly on Indian myth and the early depiction of the Okefenokee Swamp. St. Augustine is erroneously placed, which gives the illusion of a compact coastline for today's South Carolina and Georgia. Embellished with various game, ocean vessels, sea monsters, and Indian villages, it is considered to be one of the most beautifully executed maps ever of the Southeast. This map is one of the most special in our collection. It was made by Mark Catesby, and it was published in his Natural History of Carolina, Florida, and the Bahama Islands in London in 1731 and 32. The subscribers to Catesby's celebrated natural history received this map bound into their volumes, illustrating the area with which Catesby dealt in his famous work illustrating plants, animals, birds, fish, and insects of America. This scarce map, embellished with a seaweed and seashell-covered cartouche, is considered by many collectors to be one of the most highly prized maps of the colonial south. 
next map was published in Nuremberg in 1746 by perhaps the most famous German map publisher of his time, Johann Baptist Hohmann. Really sought after for his talents, he achieved greatness even during his lifetime. With such praise surrounding him, it was only fitting that he was appointed geographer to the emperor in 1715. This map depicts the Americas with the various political regions color-coded. The line of demarcation is accurately drawn, and a great deal of Western Europe and Western Africa is included. Indian tribes are identified throughout the map. In North America, California is shown in peninsular form. However, the Northwest region is still in doubt, ergo completely omitted. Homan maps such as this one are generally engraved with immense and fine detail. The cartouche is normally a story in itself, with volcanoes erupting, beautiful Native Americans, gold treasure spilling over, and lush tropical foliage. To view the complete virtual tour of the museum's Bishop Collection of Antique Maps and Prints, please visit our virtual museum page at www.myrtlebeachartmuseum.org. Now we're going to explore mind maps. Mapping, Mapping the, mind. the mind. For visual learners, mind mapping is a great tool for visually organizing information and can be used as an alternative to traditional linear note taking. Mind mapping uses the concept of radiant thinking, that is, thoughts radiate out from a single idea. You start with your central topic or key concept question or idea, from which sprouts subtopics, from which sprouts related ideas. You can use mind maps to explore anything, even your own mind. We're going to do a few examples. Using a mind map for self-reflection, I will explore the question, what makes me happy, and organize this information visually by using images and single words or short phrases. So, traveling, learning, making things, and other people make me happy. Expanding on these subtopics, I can say that my family makes me happy, as well as receiving letters from friends and also teaching children. Things that I like making are these movies, I love baking bread, and also making pottery. Learning, I love to learn about art and nature and animals, and also astronomy. What I love about traveling is exploring the natural world, trying traditional food of different cultures, and visiting historical places. Now, I'll use a mind map to explore a topic of interest. I would like to learn more about Jupiter, so I'm going to break these down into physical characteristics, mythology, orbit and rotation, and its moons as subtopics. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system and is also a gas giant. It has several layers of clouds of various colors. It's known for the big red spot, which is a storm, and also the Jovian ring system. Jupiter is the fifth planet from our sun. One year on Jupiter is equivalent to 12 years on Earth, and one day on Jupiter is only 10 Earth hours. The four largest moons of Jupiter are known as the Galilean satellites, but it has 75 other moons. In mythology, Jupiter is the king of the gods, or father sky god. Equivalent names in different mythologies are Zeus, Thor, and Jove. Now it's time for an art project. For our art project today, we're going to use mind maps to explore a topic of our choice. I chose the platypus, but you can choose whatever you'd like to learn more about. These are the materials you will need. Art kit materials, which include scrap paper of various colors and a 12 by 18 inch white construction paper. 
Other materials needed are glue, scissors, pencil, colored pencils, markers, or crayons. Optional materials are scrap magazines. The first step is to choose a topic of interest or question. What do you want to know more about? Sharks? Or the Great Pyramids? Or how airplanes work? What are black holes? Or, what do I want to be when I grow up? The next step is to figure out your subtopics. So what do you want to know more about your topic? So as far as platypi are concerned, I'd like to know more about their habitat, so where they live, what food they eat, how they're classified, their physical attributes, and also what threatens the population of platypi. You can do this first step on just a piece of notebook paper like I'm doing, or you can do it on your 12 by 18 sheet of paper that came in your art kit. The next step is to research your topic, or you can self-reflect if you've chosen a question like, what makes me happy? And remember, your local library is a great source for information. After I was finished researching about platypi, I began working on my mind map on my 12 by 18 inch piece of white construction paper. And I used the scrap pieces just to incorporate color and also collage into my mind map. For instance, I learned that platypi can be found in Australia and Tasmania. So I used a scrap piece of paper to outline the shape of Australia and Tasmania and glued it on my paper where I would have the related ideas under my subtopic habitat. You can also add color using colored pencils or markers or crayons to your mind map. For instance, Platypi are found in the rainforests of Australia and Tasmania, and they're also found in streams and rivers. So I drew kind of tropical leaves and then a little stream. And you can incorporate images throughout your entire mind map. So under food, I drew all the pictures of the different types of things that platypi eat. I also used scrap paper to create a platypus to put in the center of my mind map and also used it to create the branches that sprout out to the subtopics. When I was finished my mind map, I used magazines to cut out letters to create kind of a title for my mind map, which was platypus, and also used scrap paper to kind of add decorative elements to the mind map also. Some interesting things that I learned about platypi are that they are venomous and they're also biofluorescent. So if they were in the dark and you had a black light, they would glow. And for visual learners, this is a great way to recall information. For me, 
I'm going to think of the different images that I created in my mind map to recall what I now know about Platypi. We would love to see your creations. You can share them with us on Instagram or Facebook, either by tagging us or using the hashtag MBArtMuseum. Thank you to our generous sponsors and supporters. Thank you to our library partners, 